Okay, so hey everyone, this is Pavlina from Pavlina's Kids Plays. I'm on location at the Strawberry Festival in Plant City, Florida with Graham Russell and Rachel Hitchcock. Hello. How are you doing? Hello. Okay. How are you? Good. How are you guys? Very good. Very well. Okay, good. So, um, and you guys are Air Supply. So when you started out, um, what was your goals like as a music group and like did you meet or surpass those goals? Did we what? I'm sorry? Like did you meet or surpass those goals? Oh, uh, well, when we first started out, we just wanted to sing together. We didn't really have, mm -hmm. uh, we had no idea of the success we were going to achieve. But I think when you begin, you just want to make a record and, yeah. and play live. And that's, once we'd done that, we wanted to make another record. So mm -hmm. it just kind of builds and builds, I think. Very good, yeah. That was a good answer. And still, it's still building, you know. Yeah. You, always, you always keep advancing your goals past boundaries that you achieve you know yeah you just want to get better after every recording and better after every show and, you know but we never really had a plan like we, in five years we want to be anywhere we just thought this is great so let's you know do it as long as we both enjoyed working mm. with each other and as long as people wanted to see us and that certainly hasn't decreased ever no. okay awesome okay so growing up kids have all kinds of obstacles to overcome what obstacles did you guys have growing up and how did you overcome or deal with them well we both came from very similar backgrounds graham's english and i'm australian we were both working class you know from working class families so it was very tough you know when you grow up because yep. i was born in the inner, inner city in melbourne and graham was born in the inner city of nottingham yeah <laughs> and uh so you know you had to get, get get through all that but i think both early on in our lives we decided as individuals that we didn't want to stay there because there yeah. was no future for us. So, you know, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, luck and, and finding out what you were good at and where you wanted to go and just, you know, take it one step at a time. But, okay. uh, you know, I mean, it's, it's tough growing up for any kid, no matter where you live, because, you know, you have to go through a lot and you're experiencing new things and meeting new people and some of them are nice, some of them aren't, mm -hmm. you know, you've just got to get through it and be determined. Yes. Mm. Okay. So, um... Like your song, reach out, to, like reaches out to a lot of people, like emotionally. Um, what, like, like probably was like the most touching story you've ever heard uh, for one of your songs, and how, like, that did that affect your listener? Well, you know, the, there's a lot. We we have a lot of people that come to us after the show and mm -hmm. say certain things. There's nothing specifically a single moment, you know, but we know that people get very touched by our songs, and they write a lot of letters, and you know, people have babies while they're playing our songs mm -hmm. and uh, you know I mean it our music has become a part of people's lives but through several generations now because we've been playing a long time you know uh, mm -hmm. but all all ages know our songs and I think it touches all of them you know I mean otherwise it, they wouldn't keep coming back and we wouldn't be able to keep playing you know yeah. so it, it really do, our mu we know that our music means a lot to a lot of people mm -hmm. But yeah, like I listen to a lot of your songs and I really like them. So oh really? Thank yeah. You. That's yeah. very interesting because you're, are you 14? Yes, I am. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So. See, that's a, <laughs> a different generation than, than mm -hmm. us. But that's great. That's yeah. wonderful. So, okay, so um, when writing your songs, like how do you look for your inspiration and what makes it like simple but great? What makes what? The last one? Like what makes it like really simple but great? So. Oh. Well, the thing is, you know, I've been writing songs for a long, for 50 years now, mm -hmm. which is a lot, sounds ridiculous, doesn't it? But it's true. <laughs> but, uh, um, you know, I always try to keep the songs very simple. Mm -hmm. And I think people understand our songs because they are simple and there's nothing really clever in there, yeah. but they're very heartfelt and they get straight to people's hearts, you know. Mm -hmm and that's what they're designed to do but you know the, the thing with us it's very simple and I you know as far as inspiration goes I I write all the time you know even when I'm sitting on a plane I'm thinking of songs all the time and I'm thinking about lyrics and I'm I'm changing songs around uh, so it's a never-ending process but for me life itself is inspiration I mean everything being here at the strawberry festival is very inspiring seeing all these uh, different ages walking around and buying strawberries and stuff and <laughs> you know uh, deep fried snickers bars all that healthy stuff fried, you know? deep fried butter you know they have deep, that out there oh my god deep fried really? butter right wow but you know but everything is a, is an inspiration you know it's like a a self uh what do they call it self participating uh genre that we live in you know what? 
Yeah, I just, I just made that up. It's absolutely the biggest load of rubbish you ever heard. But w what I mean is, uh, our whole lifestyle is self is self perpetuating because it's very inspiring to play live on stage, mm -hmm. and that inspires me certainly in my own little world to write more songs yeah. and then we learn more songs and we play more songs and that is it kind of keeps going it's this thing that just it's like a nuclear fission it just creates and feeds on itself yeah, so it's, it's self-perpetuating exactly yeah he's the big brain there's a big <laughs> brain. <laughs> oh I, I touched his hair <laughs> wardrobe cat <laughs> But yeah, that, it, it is self-perpetuating. It, it's, it's, it's like a big machine that just keeps going, mm -hmm. you know. But uh, we all do our part and it's a lot of fun. Yeah. But it's, it's hard work, but we love it, you know, we really do. We're very passionate about it. Okay, yeah. awesome. So um, starting out in the 1970s and 80s um, with hit songs, like what, like how is it different now for you guys? Like um, for an artist, like is it good or bad to start out? You know? Well, I think it's way more difficult these yeah. days because uh, you know, the business has changed 100% mm -hmm. from when we first began. There were record companies that were around then, had a lot of money and s would support new acts and kind of bring them along and nurture them. Mm -hmm. I think these days if you release a recording and it doesn't sell, then they just throw you out and yeah. get somebody else, you know. So I think it's very disposable, unfortunately. Yeah. But the avenues of the internet, mm -hmm. uh, specifically, uh, you know, have made music a lot more accessible to everybody in the world that has a laptop or, a, you know, a phone of some description that's worth mm -hmm. anything. Um, but I wouldn't want to start. I wouldn't want to be where we were, right? And, and have to start again now. Mm -hmm. I mean, no. I'm not saying start again, but just start. If I didn't know anything about the business, because it just doesn't yeah. seem like it's a lot of fun mm -hmm. anymore for a lot of people. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, it's just a totally different time and yeah. age. But then it should be because that was a, that's yeah. almost mm -hmm. 40 years ago that we started, you know. And uh, so it should have evolved, and it has, you know. But if you'd have said to us 40 years ago that if we'd have known that. There wouldn't be any such thing as record companies virtually now, which mm -hmm. there isn't. Everybody does their own thing. They put their songs on iTunes and YouTube, yeah. and that's how they get noticed, you know. And I think that's a great medium, but uh, it's certainly a different world from when we started. But, you know, we're involved in the new way now anyway as well. Yeah. You know, you have to be. Mm -hmm. But what we have going for us is we have uh, the former way as well, you know. I mean, we still make records, obviously, everybody does. But we're very versed in the way the music business works. Mm -hmm. You know, we've spent a long, lot of years in it, so we know how it works. I think a lot of the younger kids, the YouTube generation, yeah. uh, I don't really know if they know how the business works. You know, is that, that's what you just said. Yeah. yeah. Because it's quite complicated, and you know, it works a certain way, but I don't know if they understand it. We're mm -hmm. from the inner tube generation. We're, we're the inner tube. <laughs> ah, that's good. That's one in a row. <laughs> That's great. Did you just think of that? Yeah, I did. Oh my God. Wow. He comes up with these great gems. <laughs> Once every four or five years, I'm going to The for inner a tube. Of I like that. The inner tube. That was that's quote <laughs> of the week, that is. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, when I talked to John Oates, he thought it was definitely a lot harder, too. Like, from yeah. Holly Oates. And oh, did you talk to John? Yeah. Oh, far out. Was he's, he a nice guy? Oh, he's very nice. Oh, cool. Yeah. Yeah. So. Great. That's great stuff. Mm -hmm. So, um,. Like, what has been, like, your philosophy for being so successful and performing for over 35 years? Um, well, I, I think for, we don't take anything for granted, you know, mm -hmm. because you can't. If you if you relax and think that, you know, you're going to be given this, whatever it is on a plate, you know, yeah. sell out concerts or, you know, presume somebody's going to buy what you're recording. Um, that's a one-way ticket to Palookaville. That's mm. another good one, too. Um, you, you know, just got to stay focused and you've got to stay grounded and, not, and be humble. Um, just all those things, because otherwise you'll get shut down in a big hurry. Yeah, that's always been our philosophy. I mean, we never consider ourselves as be, uh, as wallowing in success. You know, I mean, we're we're a touring band, and, and it's a business, and we keep working. You know, because we want to. But and on the way, we bring a lot of joy and pleasure to millions of people. So so that's great. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, but you know, we we've never really arrived we're still traveling on that road that we created and we're, we're journeying on that road and where we don't know where we're going but we only know we're going yeah. you know what i mean yeah write that down will you name? <laughs> <laughs> well we're not going we're not going you'd like that wouldn't you <laughs> well what are your upcoming plans and events 
Uh, we're just on the road constantly. We leave for Mexico and Brazil on Tuesday. We're gone for nearly a month. Mm -hmm. uh, and then, you know, we have the rest of the year taken care of with, with concerts. We're releasing a, a, a DVD a concert video that we recorded in Jerusalem last mm -hmm. year. Uh, when, when that's ready for its time to be born. Mm. Um, and Graham's, as you said, constantly right, so we're, you know, we're, we're putting new songs into the show um, all the time, so when it comes time to do the next studio uh, CD, we'll be ready to go. Mm. Okay, good. Well, thank you so much for talking You're to me. You're welcome. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. You've been very good. Yes. Great. You make me believe what tomorrow could bring. So